I've shot raw for at least a decade. I've no idea. Literally from when I jumped into digital after the Fuji S2 Pro, I believe I went to the D200, and that's probably when I started with the Nikon D200. So I've been stubbornly using RAW for all that time. Of course, it made complete sense, but check it out. I'm currently, finally, trying the JPEG engine in the Fuji X series cameras. And I tell you what, I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. And if you wanna jump on the project, feel free to do so. Now, people have been raving about this for absolutely ages, since Fuji brought out the X-Series. Obviously, Fujifilm have a huge history in film, and it seems that they've definitely translated that experience into the engine of their digital cameras now the Fujifilm X series cameras so I'm trying it out with my X Pro 1 the new X-T10 the X-T1 and the X-30 and it's definitely something I'm enjoying let me explain what I've been doing possibly you've already done it if not I definitely recommend you give it a go frankly it's an eye-opener let's say I've set the camera up so that, well in this case I've set the X30 up so that I get JPEGs only. Fine, L3-2 dimension. And I've took a few suggestions from the internet from respected photographers, ones that have work that I particularly enjoy. And I've used those settings, their film simulations, as a base, as a starting point so that I can get into my own. And this is where I'm at at the moment. I've been using this X30 daily now, and I've tried it out on the other bodies, as I said, and it's fantastic. So what I do is I set up the camera this way. The relevant stuff for you, I've got auto, ISO, a base of 100, limit of 1600. Technically, uh, you could go up, it's not a problem. I could probably change that, and I've Got the shutter speed down at 1 60th. If you're doing a lot of low light work, you can bump that up to 32, maybe 64. I think that's what I'm gonna do next. But image size large, 32, that's my personal preference. Image quality in this body at the moment, I've got it set to fine. In my pro bodies, I'm gonna use fine and raw, just so I've got a little backup. Dynamic range, 100, not a big worry about that. You'll notice film simulation is currently blanked out. That's because there's another level to this test. Film simulation bracket, that's the level to this test. My standard go-to at the moment is Cat Classic Chrome. Then I've got Astia set in there and afterwards, the third one, Monochrome plus R filter. Let me explain my settings. Self timer, don't worry about it. Interval, don't worry about it. White balance. Auto, I'm using auto as I have done for years. The cameras are great at it and you can still tweak it in Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever you use. In fact, these JPEGs seem to have some decent leeway, some decent room for editing. Color, plus two. Sharpness, plus two. Highlight tone, minus one. Shadow tone, zero. Now, Kevin Mullins changes this I think he's using minus two or plus two. Sorry, I can't remember which way. And I started that way, but I personally like, for me, at zero, it's just not quite as harsh as the other option. But give it a play, see what you prefer. Noise reduction, minus two. That's the lowest setting, low. And then those settings are saved. My base settings are that way in this camera, remember, Fine plus raw in my pro cameras. Now, remember we spoke about the film bracketing. Now that's something I've literally just discovered a couple days ago. So the project took an extra turn. If you hit drive, you can go from your single shot modes at the top, your frame captures, your bracketing, and you can choose film simulation bracket. What that means is, as you saw down here, it will give you an image file 
from each of the three film settings you've selected. So that way you can check out from one shot which you prefer. That's given me the chance to look at classic chrome, compare it to Astia. Now so far, in some cases, I do like the Astia. It gives a nice little tone, but for the most part, classic chrome is still doing it for me. With that said, this won't give you a raw file as well. So bear that in mind if you really want the raw file. In my pro cameras, so far, I think I'm going to stick with the classic Chrome with the settings that you saw, plus a raw file just in case. And for the black and white shots, I'm going to do that in Photoshop. Just for now, I may improve on that. As I said, I'm going to show you some shots, but don't expect anything super duper fantastic. Perhaps take note of the tone, take note of the sharpness, the colors, all that I'm letting the camera do. I read another good quote from Mr. Mullins and somebody said to him, why is it you're using £5,000 worth of gear and you're not trying to get the most out of the camera? Roughly, that's what was said, roughly. And he replied, well, you're spending so much on a camera, why don't you trust it to pump out the images that it can really do? Now that's what's going on with these Fujifilm cameras. I'm finding that it's taken me back to the film days but I can see what's going on. So it's not completely like the film days, but it means that I'm working around the manual controls a lot easier because you've got what you see, what you get. So if you're new to it, don't be too afraid. It's not a big deal. You can get into it, no problem. These cameras have an amazing set of functions on the top. Well, the X30 is a bit more basic, XT10 maybe bit basic for you as well but you can do you can access what you need so really there's no massive excuse set set it to manual if you like set the shutter speed to something you're comfortable with the aperture to what you want and then just rock back and forth on the iso or use auto iso use the exposure compensator and just enjoy it fortunately you can see what's going on on the screen straight after so you're not going to burn out a lot of film and get your own personal tastes maybe start off with the settings that i've mentioned that i've also pilfered from somebody else and then work it your own way i'm still in that currently on classic chrome currently enjoying the monochrome uh, plus r filter which i really do like now i have tried to work on the files on the computer just in case there's something you just want to tweak and you've got room as i said and other people on the internet are saying the same thing. If you're not opening and closing, destroying the file too much, you're gonna be fine. If you really wanna get a huge file, a huge print, I should say, you might not get it doing it this way. Although these files have been known to get up to wall size. In fact, my D200 files, without comparing them too much, but that's a now allegedly ancient camera. In fact, I don't even know where mine is because it's been sold on quite a long time ago those files were used for wall size exhibits at Bradford University I believe absolutely fantastic and that was from old tech these cameras are amazing now so get out have a play with the JPEGs look at the boring stuff that I'm putting on now all of this is straight out of camera no cropping no editing nothing all the editing is done in the camera rely on it so why am i using jpegs now well it's just brought the fun back i can spend more time shooting more time getting into the different settings on the camera playing with the basics getting back to roots more time than sitting in front of the computer especially when i'm traveling this is going to be the way forwards i don't have to wait a couple of months to get back put everything through the computer and then upload looking at this with the test i've done I could have produced the same work, maybe enjoyed it even more using the JPEG engine. Check it out, see what you think. And I'm not talking bad about RAW. RAW is fantastic. I'm still trying to get over my stubborn thoughts about that because I really do believe RAW is the digital negative. It really is. There's no two ways around it. You're gonna get the best file possible. But I dare you to try to replicate the JPEGs 
quickly and easily shooting him raw. Some of you are going to be fantastic at that. But personally, what I'm getting out of this in the JPEGs really is just negating the need for me to shoot in RAW in most instances. Once I've start using it professionally, there might be a bit more to the story, which is also why I'm going to have backup RAW files now. Here are the images that I've mentioned several times and I've hyped up a little bit too much, but whatever, here they are. Thanks for listening.